everybody. My goodness, we've been waiting all year to come do this. So excited for this week to come. A lot of fishing to be done. Today, we are setting up our remote camp here on a river system. Today's video sponsor, the most perfect sponsor for out here in the remote wilderness, and it's a satellite communication device by Motorola. It's their DeFi system, and it is a way for you to communicate via text uh, almost instantly. I've been trying this thing out on their satellites that they have. It's very quick, so if you're doing any kind of backcountry work, if you're doing remote hunting, camping, fishing trips, you want to communicate with your friends, your loved ones, emergencies, all that stuff. I like to get lost out in places that don't have cell phone service, but there are times where you definitely need it. You got to communicate. So I'm going to show you the system. It's, it's pretty awesome. And if you do any kind of remote outdoor travels, you need to check it out. All right, y'all, this is the unit right here. I've been just carrying it in my pack. I've had it on for a few days. It's still at 90% battery, so the battery life's very good on it. It comes with this tether, so you can clip it onto your pack if you want. And so far, the connection has been very good. So what this actually does is it allows you to go in and out of your cell service. So if you do have cell service active on your phone, it will go ahead through the app, the Bullet app, and it will send the message if you have cell phone service. But if you don't, it will automatically automatically connect to the satellites and send through that. That way you're not wasting messages on your plan. And the plans are really good. They have an awesome deal right now on these actually. You get the first year of service free on just the basic plan. Now how we're using these this week at camp, I'm checking in back home with LFD. He's taking care of the chickens. He's making sure everything's good over at our house. So we're checking in with family and they don't need one of these devices, but out here there is zero cell phone service, and there are times, we have walkie talkies, but they only go so far, especially in the mountains, the trees, they only grow like a mile. Me and my buddy Lance, we're, we're fishing, so we're leaving one of these with our wives, and we're able to text them back and forth, so that is the only way we can get a message out in these mountains is using these right here having the family with us it's pretty essential because with the toddlers running around who knows what can happen and there is an SOS button on the device itself so you can actually use the SOS uh, through the the bullet app or you can just hold this down right here and it will send a cavalry team so if you fell down a cliff you broke your leg or uh, rattlesnake whatever you hit this and you can get an emergency team sent out to you and save you Go check these out, y'all. The link is down in the description. You can see more about the device itself, the service plans, all of it, and I can't think of a better sponsor while we're out here. So this is gonna keep us safe, keep us in communication while we're out here in the wilderness. But now, we're back to the woods. Let's set it up. So first thing we're gonna do is drop down our Little posts, little hack impact wrench with a 19 millimeter socket. Makes it a lot faster. Woo! That dust is coming off there. Oh, yeah. Dusty. One more. All right, now that we're stable, let's go inside and pop it up. Okay, now we're going to pop up this side. It's a little tough. You gotta get your leg into it. There we go. Alright, 
bedroom and kitchen. We got both the campers set up at such an angle to kind of centerpiece the fire, uh, the fire pit that we've got over here with the mountains in the background. Let me just zoom out right here for so you guys can see the the full spectrum. That is nice, little camper's corner. Right now, I've got my um, my thermostat running for the water. I have the fridge running. I have. Uh, a couple of little knickknack things running inside of here and what's cool about what we installed this year with my buddy Lance actually he helped me do this is we ins installed a shunt and we also installed a different um, a smart solar charger that also connects to this to the Victron app that we have right here so I can go into the shunt right now it's showing that we're at 99% charge and we're currently pulling 1.95 amps. My battery's on the way up here with the solar uh, controller. They said that they were full, uh, or they acted like they were full and floating, and that means they're not putting in any solar power, but they were, they were not. They were only at 91%, so I don't know. There's been, there's been some hiccups, and we don't, we don't need any hiccups out here. This is the real deal, Holyfield. So we need everything to work correctly. The guy that you installed it. I mean, my, my, uh, yeah, the guy that wired everything. No, it's, my, my it's part of it. Yeah, yours works. I'm, it's I'm fine. going to brush my teeth. Okay, sounds good. Here's what I have as a backup, and it has uh, 1,800 watts of power, and I've got a 200 watt solar panel in it right now, and it is. It'll be fully charged in one hour. I started at 70%. So if all else fails, I think I will actually be able to run the whole camper off of that. I have to be skimping by, but that's, that's my backup. To keep the family happy, keep everybody trucking so that me and my buddy can go fishing without any sort of problems back at camp. In the outdoor kitchen with OSG. Give me an update. <laughs> I'm exhausted and it's only day one, y'all. <laughs> Mainly because be Ben. Yes. Ben is, uh, he's turning out to be really hard. <laughs> the initiation of Ben. Uh, y'all, it was all hands on deck. All hands on deck. Like, they're running around, they're, they're gathering rocks, they're digging holes, you know, they're, they got sharp objects. Um, ben got his hand smashed in the door crack over here. He was crying. <laughs> you know, we are we are remote. We are hours, many hours, probably four hours away from the hospital. So, oh look, there's a hummingbird. Oh my gosh, a hummingbird just, just blessed it us. It was, it was trying to land on you. I know. On me? It was, yeah. You got a red jacket on. No, it was it's trying to kiss you. It's because of my spirit, dude. It was trying to kiss you. It's my spirit. I, I think heard I scared it. Scared it away. I heard it go. <laughs> Your spirit with no shoes on. Yes, sir. I'm connected with the earth. <laughs> Look at these toes right now, Those folks. Those toes are disgusting. They're not sleeping by me. <laughs> these toes. I'm glad you said it, not me. I'm not you sleeping by me. You don't want to sleep with those toes? Oh, Come no. on now. Like you these turned. are earthly toes. <laughs> We're finally at the dinner setting. The sun's going down. It's starting to get cold. And the kids are not crying. And it's just, it's a moment where we can, we can relax. My goodness. So we're, we're trying to get all, we're working out all the kinks and everything. Uh, I feel good about the solar now. Um, we're going to really see tonight with, with uh, running the heater and everything. But I did get a full charge on, uh, on the solar panel with, uh, with the Blue Eddy. So we do have backup power if something goes crazy. But as of right now, things are working okay. And the stove's working, so we got heat. Yeah, and we got food. And we got food. We got food and we got heat. We'll have fire. If everybody does not have boo-boos by the end of the day yeah by the end of the week we're okay uh, i really don't want to have to hit that sos button on the uh on the motorola yeah. but uh 
it's there if we need it. Look at these cheesy Ooh. deer burgers right now. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna dig into that with some uh, some taters. This is his first night's meal, and uh, simple. You know, a couple cold pops. You don't want to outdo yourself the first night, right? Yeah, I was thinking about steaks, and I was like, nah. I need to. We haven't even started fishing yet. So when we get on fish, we start catching some fish. We'll start cooking those steaks. Kids, fires, woods, creatures. You never know. y'all morning after cold night last night got down to 35 ran the heater we're gonna check the Victron right now the Sun has popped up over the mountaintop and we're pulling in 166 watts right now and we're sitting at 91% I feel good about our lithium battery exchange I think we're gonna make it with uh, the overcast coming in we're trying to pull as much solar as possible but right now we're gonna start packing up the truck, we're gonna leave camp, and we're gonna do some fishing exploration. And then tomorrow, me and my buddy Lance actually have a section of the river that is on private land, and we, we booked a day at the private stretch of the river that we are hoping is gonna be some pretty decent browns. It's gonna be a, a separate video. So today we'll do a little fishing, a little exploration, do a little picnic with the family and uh, just kind of get out and explore the mountains a little bit. So let's pack up the adventure wagon and let's head to the mountain meadows. Was totally not expecting this, but my wife, OSG, just spotted two cow elk out in the field, in the meadows, where we're gonna be fishing. I have never seen them this low, this low of elevation when I've been up here. I've elk hunted here a few times and I've never seen them down here. That is insane. Oh, where's my bow? Where's my tag? My goodness. We're about to have some fun though with, uh, with the trout. So just getting, uh, a trout rod rigged up we're gonna get some waders on and we're gonna go wait a little bit in this stream and see if we can pull a trout out this is this is kind of warm-up leading into the next few days and next few videos that, that we're gonna be fishing but I've never caught a euro nymph um, style trout out here I've always just thrown like a spinning rod um, I fly fished a little bit with um, with like a floating fly a dry fly but never euro nymphing which is below the surface and using special line it's like crappie fishing all right we're dangling we're dangling in the trenches with them so it's a perfect technique out here I've never uh, used it so I'm so excited to try this out hopefully we get a couple bites officially official nymph rod in hand waders on we're heading down to flowing water hey buddy are you trout fishing what do you think about it so far how do you feel about your weight that's why i tied on that I might actually, I might actually cross right here. I'm just, I'm just Ooh. It's definitely some flow. You take that big bend right there. This one? No, that that right there. 
fish this water? Yeah, I'm gonna try right here. Yeah, so this is what I'm throwing. That's what we got right oh, here. Oh, you got a heavy one. Yeah. I'm probably gonna need to. Otherwise, yeah, you have to put a put split a, shot. Yeah. In going in the bead. Oh my gosh, this water's so clear, dude. How do you determine what is too fast? Yeah, how do you determine if your nymph's moving too fast? No, but they're so camouflaged. Pretty sure I just had one, dude. I think I just had one. Had one? Yeah, I felt the tick and I, I set it and then, then uh, it wasn't on there, but I saw like a white flash. Looked like it's mouth opening, you know? It's right here behind this rock. Got him. We're on, baby. We're on. Lance. Hooked up. Woo! First trout. Not big. Just enjoying it. Woo, man, they fight different in this current. Looks like a little brown. What is it? It's a little brown. Paragon. Oh, yeah. Woo! Man, that is a pretty fish right there. Small one? Yeah. Small Paragon? Yeah. Like 18? I'll show you. Dude, this is the best looking hole so far. I know. Oh, yeah. Yep. With that little weight, weight up front. Oops, sorry. There we go. Oh, yeah. Here, let me do this professionally. This is, you know catch and release area we got to put him in the water absolute noob Think a little, uh, little split shot yep there we go ladies and gentlemen my first euro nymphing brown trout trout really hey buddy what are you doing wake up Okay, he seems a little slow, so, oh, there he goes. He gone. He gone. Hey. Hey. I don't know how long that was. It was probably about 13. Took that, a while. That, that'll, this is a, that'll earn me a drink. Yeah. A little 18. 20, might be. 18 or 20. That's what we're gonna have to use tomorrow. Little tinies. Yeah, mine, mine's, all, mine's probably too big. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the board in the gorgeous meadow here with the fly pole, full program, waders, vest, we got her done.
Got him. Another one. Woo, jumper, baby. Here we go. Y'all, we are hooked up on our second trout. Heck yeah. This one actually feels a little better. This is a 10 and a half foot three weight pole, so just gotta take your time with them. It's part of the fun. My gosh. Come here, buddy. Oh, the sounds and sights of trout fishing in the Rockies. Got to love it, baby. Come here. Yeah, he's a little better, I think. Oh, I gotta work on my landing. I gotta work on my landing, guys. There we go. Oh, he's about the same size. Absolutely gorgeous fish. I'm gonna get this guy unhooked to give you a little closer look. That little fly right there is called a uh, par paradigon, something of that nature. This one actually doesn't have as much color as that last one, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. You know, I'm gonna say, gosh, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a tape measure on me. I think that one's bigger. Let's let him go here. Let's see if we can get a swim off. Smash that like button, yes sir. So this technique of Euro nymphing, there's no indicator. You're just directly connected to the fly. And the rod's extremely sensitive, so you can feel the bite, but I also have a, a colored line, call it a cider, that I'm watching to see the depth I need to be in. And right now, I've got a little tag in tied that's sticking up. And right around that tag end, that depth is where I've had my two bites. So it changes constantly when, we're, when you're going to different bins and stuff. But right now, that's, that's where I need to keep my fly. And I just w witnessed another one jump on this other side surfaced so there's definitely another one in here somewhere I've just never fished with a fly rod this light to where when you set the hook it's completely bent over on a 14 inch fish so much fun Okay, I'm into my green cider right there. I feel like there's a couple of different little guts running through here. Some fish are gonna be in the first one, some are gonna be on that back side. <sighs> Another trout. Left hander. I got him in the slack pool. The same little uh, pair of or whatever? Yep. Yeah, I don't think I have any small enough. Oh, this is a better one. It's maybe an inch bigger than the last one. Do you have a tape measure? You gotta measure your, uh, your net. This might be a PB for me, bro. PB Brown. What chip what do you have on there? Uh, 5X. Come 
Come to Papa. Can't escape the three weight, buddy. Come on. Oh, he doesn't like me. All right, that's enough. Come here. Oh, God, what a beauty. Oh, I actually got him hooked in the fin. It doesn't count, what? He fell for it. He was looking at it. That dude, that, that's my biggest one, man. Biggest brown? That's my biggest brown. That's gorgeous. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say he's like, maybe 16. Maybe 16. Let's see, how do I measure this? Gotta go shallow water and put him flat. Oh, just like mark it? Yeah, you just kind of get a glimpse. So it's not going to be accurate, perfect, but. I'll tell you what, I could put him on my rod and I can measure him by the letter that he shows up at. I think this is my PB here, boy. Oh, God. I broke my knee there. All right, I'm just going to handle you just for a second here, buddy. Just for a second. Get you back in that cold, clean water. All right, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, these are slippery suckers. All right, he goes to, right to the start of the Cortland. <sighs> Got a measure on him now. Return you to the beautiful waters. goes wow bam all right guys I, t I take back that 16 inches just going on how, how many bass i've caught in my life he was almost to the first sea in the Cortland. that's almost a street legal uh largemouth 14 inches So I, th I honestly think my biggest one's like 15 and I ate him. So <laughs> it was a hungry situation. I was elk hunting. Three brown trout. Gotta celebrate. A little early celebration right here. We're in a meadow between mountains. The stream, you can hear it in the background. I mean, the beautiful trout. I saw elk coming by. This is my fifth year up here in this mountain range and it never ceases to amaze. Every time I come here, I just stare and I'm like, wow, this almost looks fake. It's just so beautiful. First day, waking up at camp, going exploring, already catching three browns. This was kind of a test run to get our feet wet, to see, you know, get tackle, get an idea what we need to be using and everything. So I'm off to a good start. So next video, we are going to be going hardcore, putting on the waders, getting in, into a private stream, which I've never done up here. I've, this area, it kind of swings in and out of private land and then uh, public land. And I've always just hunted the public land or fished the private or fished public land, but I've never gone onto a private. So I'm really interested to see how much of a difference it's gonna be. You know, if there's gonna be bigger fish, we just get more bites whatever. So I've seen a lot of fishermen start to come up here in the last few years. It wasn't like the first year I came and there was no one up here. So you guys stay tuned for an amazing adventure and I'll see you on the next one.